Greetings! Welcome back to Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel for our fourth video in how to make patterns. This is part of a larger series on metal casting. And if you're just jumping in, if this is the first one that you've seen, there's some things from the previous videos that you were kind of taking for granted at this point. Um, if at any point you're lost or you want to catch up on some terms or see how all of this led to where we are now, I'm going to put a link up at the top of the screen to a playlist which contains all of these videos so they'll be easy to find for you. Okay? The first of our pattern making videos, we did some very simple flat back patterns and we talked about all of the, the components that make a good castable pattern. Right? This is a very, very simple one, but it illustrates what makes a pattern castable. Right? Then we went on to making a two-part pattern and an indexed match plate okay, for some swing weights, for some decoys. Then we talked about some uh, precision model making and we made these corner brackets for campaign furniture okay, and a follow block to make them castable because without a follow block you can't really cast this form. In this one we're going to build on the follow block idea and we're going to make a parting board, right? So this is, in essence, a very large, more complicated follow block, right? It has some similarities to follow blocks, it has some similarities to match plates, but it's different in some of its own ways as well. So if you're interested in this and want to keep learning about pattern making and metal casting, come join in. We'll get all this stuff put away and we'll come back to these decoys, these little uh, paperweight decoys, miniatures. Okay? So you could make a follow block this style for these, but what I want to do is show you one additional thing, and I'm going to take two of these, and I'm going to make a board where I have basically the same concept as a follow block, but built into a board, sort of reminiscent of a match plate, but with the pattern staying loose, okay? That's called a parting board, right? Or sometimes a follow board. So let me clear off my area and we'll dig into that project with this little miniature decoy. Okay, so here's our next project. We have these two um, drafting duck paperweight type items. These are carved out of maple, and we want to be able to cast these in metal as well so that they can be nice, heavy pepper, paperweights. The problem is, everything's round, okay? These have to be cast so that there's no overhangs. So it can't be a flat back pattern like this because there's no way to cast in here, no way to cast in here, no way to cast in here, okay? So these need to be on their side when we pound the sand down around them, okay? So what we're gonna make is what's called a parting board. It's similar to a match plate, but a match plate is a solid construction and it never comes apart. A parting board is kind of like a glorified follow block where you have a board and you've got a depression in it that will hold your part thusly while you put the sand around one side. Then you will remove remove this, remove the um, drag from the parting board, flip it upside down, then you put the part back in the cavity in the first and then use it as a loose pattern from that point forward. Okay, So we need to make a depression which exactly fits the duck. Now the real traditional way to do this would be to carve it. Okay, But carving a negative of this is no small task. Okay, So we're going to use some of our polymer clay in order to do this. Now, to get started here, let me just get these out of the way for now. <clears throat> to get started here, I have just made this frame, just screw and frame construction. This isn't glued together. Some of these little corners, I just use these to fill space so we don't need as much clay. You can see this one will go in here like that. And I already showed the other one. Um, wood is a whole lot cheaper than this stuff. So I was trying to leave the smallest possible cavities to fill. Um, these I tacked in with super glue and then screwed them. The rest is just screwed. There's a little bit of flex in it yet, but we'll deal with that here as we go. Um, 
the first thing we need to do is to line this thing with some of our parchment, okay? So that, kind of score a line there. So that after we press all of this clay in, that we can get it back out without everything sticking, okay? So I'm gonna cut some small pieces of the parchment. And these are just going to get temporarily taped like this. Okay. Just loosely taped here. And then they're gonna get folded around to the back. Okay. Wedge down. And then I have a just a scrap piece of plywood I'm going to screw to the back of this once everything's set up. So I'm gonna get all of that arranged off camera and then we'll come back and start working on one of these um, cavities. So here we go. We have our little nest cavity for our duck, pun intended. Um, completely lined with the parchment. The tape doesn't stick very well to the parchment. You can see, you know, like that peeling off. But, you know, you have to remember that's a feature, not a bug. Because the whole point of parchment is that we don't want stuff to stick to it. Okay, so it just needs to be here enough to hang out while we get everything set. And it's not going to come completely free because this piece of plywood is just a scrap. Like, this sort of stuff is great scrap wood projects. Can you see the whole thing, hon? Mm -mm. No. How about there? That's okay. Um, this is a great scrap wood project, and this is just one, two, three, four screws in the corners. Because we're going to take this completely off when we go to remove our clay molded cavity for the duck. So we can get it out without squishing it. Right, so that's just temporarily attached. And that board is then, with screw pressure, pinching all of this against the bottom, so the tape just kind of has to keep these sides from going nuts on us, and it should do that. Now, I'm just going to do one at a time, right? And this is the uh, Merganser family here. Okay. And what we need is we want the tip, we want the parting line to go right down the middle here, right? So that tip of the beak needs to be right at the corner of the wood. The tip of that beak right at the corner of the wood, the tip of that beak, and then the middle of those two tails right at the edge of the wood, okay? So the first thing is we need to make a uh, an interior here. So I'm going to just make a flat patty of this clay and just start lining it, okay? Just start lining it with the clay. I'll get this all done and then we'll turn the camera back on again. So here we go. We have this um, completely lined and I stuffed a little extra in the corners while I was at it. Now we've got to start lining up the duck. So again, you know, I don't care where the parting line falls here. And along some of these really even curves, these really gentle, relatively flat curves, you can get away with a lot there too. Okay but I really care about these beaks, about these pointy spots, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a clump of this and I'm gonna put it right under the head. I have a big old stalactite there. Okay. And then I'm going to put another one under this little head there. Okay. Now we're going to start to position this thing. So I'm going to get my square out and then just start pressing down until that's right where I, right, the corner of this is right at the corner of that beak. Okay. Now that one went down a little bit too much. Let me get this one. Okay, that's right where I want that. And 
Now this levered up a little bit, that's just fine. It was down a little bit too much. Let me just kind of need this. Need to get a little bit more under this little bird's head. Press, press it down in. There. Baby position, nice and gentle. Okay, now this is a little too far down. That's a little too far up. So. Now, what I think we're doing, I think we're hitting bottom right here. So I'm going to pull a little clay out this region. we need to support the nose here. Just a little in there. Push it around and mold it. That's the whole point of clay. Pretty darn good. Now you can make small adjustments in your final sand mold. Right? It's, it's not it's not as though you can't come in here with a spoon after you've pounded the sand around it and if something got a little bit off kilter you can just park down there a smidgen. But if we're going to all the lengths of building a parting board like this we want it to be as good as possible so we have the least amount of work to do. Now, I want to make a couple of reference points in here. So I'm going to just take a wad of clay and put it underneath this little guy's head there. Just kind of smooch it down there. Make it a little pillow. Make it a little pillow. I'm going to take a little bit more. does take quite a bit of the clay. A little bit of kilter that way. Not that that's real critical. And we're going to adjust all of this again. Right now I'm trying to get close. We'll see why here in a second. Make this guy kind of a stalactite pillow. Just to kind of mark 
what my depth is going to look like there. Okay. Now, we have some reference points in there. I'm going to anchor these down. And now because we want to not use quite so much clay, I'm going to take some foil. We can wad up the foil, we can press it in, and we can fill some big chunks of space with some of this aluminum foil. But we have to know about where things are because this is not compressible the way the clay is. but it's a whole heck of a lot cheaper. Okay. So you can just make little foil balls, jam them in there, and they'll just press and stick into the clay basically give us some empty space. And then we can put some clay in on top of it just as a thin layer just to hold that in place and make it part of the structure. And now we're filling all of this negative space with mostly air supported by the foil to just, just support it enough that we can put another thin layer of clay on top. Okay. So I'm going to keep working at this, and when it's mostly filled in and we're ready to do final adjustments on the duck, I'll turn the camera back on. So you can see we're just working along here. We've got layer of clay, layer of foil, layer of clay, layer of foil. Like you can see right there, there's a little bit of foil sticking out that was a layer of foil, and then layer of clay, another layer of foil. So we're ending up with about half and half, the foil and the clay, and we're still diving into our second... Um, block of the stuff so this does take quite a bit no matter how you cut it but we're starting to get some contours that matter right here's the this is compression from the edge of the duck um, right down in here I can see a line so we can start to make um, molding contours that are a little bit more real a little bit more solid a little bit less of just a guess okay and just keeping filling in So I'll put this in. And it's okay to have relatively thin layers of clay here because this is all going to get epoxied into this wooden frame. It's going to be supported. You know, it's not just a standalone block like the follow blocks are. I'll put this in there. And then we'll see how close we got. Same thing. You know we need some more in here. It definitely does take some material. If you're watching all of these and thinking, boy, it takes as much work to get your pattern ready to cast as it does to make your pattern in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> so, you can kind of do a pretty good job of guessing where you're going to need clay because if it isn't pressed smooth, it didn't make contact. Here I know it didn't quite make contact. And here you can see it's, it's pressed smooth right there. So that's the side of the head. But I know I need some more clay in the bottom of this. there. And 
when we get up close to where the duck's actually going to lie, we want to stop using the foil and just stick to the clay because that's what's actually going to take good, take good pattern. Okay, let's see where we are. Okay, press it down in. Now, as we're doing this, we need to make sure that this is dead square, which it is, all the way along. Okay. If that is not dead square and it leans this way toward your perspective as the viewer, then that will become an overhang in the final pattern. Okay. So, let's see where we are down here. It's getting harder to pull up because there's a lot of adhesive surface. It pressed in nice. That's pretty darn close there. It looks like we need a bit more right in this area. pressing this down, try to work in small areas so you don't have a whole bunch of adhesive tension all in one spot, all at once, all across the whole thing all at once. You'll never get it pried back out. Okay. There. And now you can see we've got this impression of the wingtip there. little bit more in here. Right where that baby's going to go. Okay. I think that's pretty good down on that end. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, after checking to make sure this is square, Remember I said I wanted to make sure that all of these points contacted with the clay. And after making sure that this is square, I can see that some of these are off the center line. A couple here on the back with the beaks and this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to build these up a little bit proud. Okay. And I'm going to go over onto the wood a little bit. That's okay. Remember, this is all going to be epoxied in place anyway. And we want to build up till that center line is true. Okay. So everywhere we're building up will be concave in the drag, but convex in the cope. And it's completely acceptable to not have a perfectly even parting line. So where we need to build up a little, we need to build up a little. Not a big deal. Not a thing to worry about. We do want to make sure it's nice and even and smooth. And we might have this sag a little bit during baking, but it has enough flex. We should be able to kind of force it back in when we glue it up. I hope that doesn't happen, but it could. So there's about even there. Now again, I don't want adhesive tension across the whole thing all at once. 
there you can start to see our cavities developing nicely. Okay, I am not making contact across the bottom here, so I'm going to put some more clay in. We don't have to have perfect contact all the way around, but it does need to be well supported so we're not breaking stuff when we start pounding on it. And pound on it we will do. Use the tip of the butter knife in there. You can get all sorts of official modeling tools, but you don't need them. Especially as a hobbyist. Especially as a hobbyist that's doing this once in a while. Just use butter knife. Okay. Yep, we have pretty good contact all the way around. want to build out around the head here a little bit just like I did over there building up a smidgen Now the inside of this cavity doesn't have to be completely smooth because it's not going to be part of the cast. This is just a cradle to hold it. This surface will be molded first. We'll flip the mold. We'll put, take this out of the parting board, put it into that cavity, and then the reverse will be the actual carving image. Right, so this is not like when you're making a silicon mold to replicate a wax pattern. We will go back to this original carving for every sand mold made. I do want it to be as smooth and look as nice as possible. That's just good craftsmanship. Maybe a little piece of wood to kind of pack that in there. Can't quite fit my finger or the knife. There. So that's what we need to do there. Then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to wiggle it loose here once. Okay. See, nice cavity. And these little folds and voids there, if they annoy you, sure, you can go and you can get a little bit of stuff smooched in. But. you don't have to worry about all of those seams and lines. They won't be part of the final casting. We just want to make sure that we have good contact all the way around the pattern so we're not hammering against sharp edges or big overhangs in the clay. Like, you see that right there? That does need filled up a little bit. Because that would be a fragile spot. But like little creases and lines, we don't care. They're fine. 
press it down in. Okay. There. Now, we're going to need to work more in this area. We're going to need to work more over here. You can kind of see how everywhere it's made good contact. It's smooth from pressing against that gloss paint. Okay. And everywhere it's rough, we haven't really made good contact. So we're just going to keep working along like this. I'm going to do some of this off camera and then we'll look at results. Here's our finished piece. Now I've just been cutting through the tape and this paper all the way around. I already did this on the bottom just to make sure that there's no hang-ups, especially since we have this overhang developed. Okay, fine. But we do need to uh, make sure that we recognize that that's there. And ever so carefully from behind, obviously I took the plywood off the back. I'm going to push this up. Looks like something's hanging there. There we are. And there is our big giant piece of thing. <laughs> like I said, this takes a lot of clay, even with the, uh, ooh, okay, no, I'm just going to leave that, just going to leave that too, anything that sticks, let go, let it be, okay, so this now needs to be very carefully depapered and detaped to the maximum extent possible, and then baked according to the instructions on whatever sort of clay you bought. Okay. Very carefully. Okay, a little bit broke, but that's not that's not a problem there. Okay. And this shouldn't sag too bad because there isn't all that much overhang. So, I'm just going to let this sit here. I'm going to get a um, tray, baking tray, very carefully. Side this onto a uh, uh, wax paper, or not wax paper, but the uh, uh, parchment paper prepared tray, and we're going to bake it. I'm also going to do this other one on the other side, and then I'll show assembling the final board. So here you go. We have our parting board finished. These are just set in loose. They had such a good fit that I saw no need to further glue them. Um, that'll also make it removable if I ever need to repair anything. I have the plywood screwed on the back again just to keep it nice and rigid. I will probably replace that. It has a little bit of a wiggle in it. I'll probably upgrade to a less garbage piece of garbage plywood at some point in time here. This is all scrap wood projects. We know that. It's good stuff, but we do want straight scrap wood anyway, so <laughs> that'll be that'll be amended at some point when I have a chance. But this is castable as is, right? So we'll put the drag over it, pack sand, then flip it, pick off the board, remove the patterns. The patterns come free, and then in the mirror image configuration, we'll go back in those cavities, and then you'll pound the cope on top, right? So, very nice way of handling loose patterns, just like these. Now, you are locked into having this board, right, with these two patterns on it, but that's okay, right? You could always just omit one pattern and just let that cavity fill up, or fill it up after the fact if you only wanted to cast one. You know, you can, you can deal with that, no problem. The insides aren't perfectly smooth. They don't have to be. This won't be part of the casting in any way. It's just a support. But you do want good contact all the way around. So you don't have you know, spots where it's hitting and other spots where it can leverage down in or you can end up snapping parts as you pound. Mm. Especially that fish. I've fixed that stupid fish about five times already. Because the grain runs this way through the body of the fish, but then that leaves cross grain right here at the head and it keeps breaking off. So I'm a little annoyed at my fish. But a little super glue goes a long way. Um, it, it's okay. It's still a very castable pattern, right? 
Um, we don't have anything in this video series with cores or some of the you know really sophisticated shrinkage calculations that you would do if you're casting parts for you know moving parts, engine parts, you know engineering applications like that. But this should give you a good basic idea between the two videos, the first one and this one, of working with the basic forms of patterns. Right, you got your flat back, you've got your um, parting board patterns that have to be held because they're round. We have our follow block patterns that have to be held because you know they need to be at that angle to give the illusion of draft where we don't want to build it into the pattern. And we have our two-piece patterns, in this case, made into a match plate, permanently mounted. Okay? So we've got lots of stuff for you to start with. If you want to get into casting, if you want to get into making some of your own patterns, casting some of your carvings in metal or you know making parts for furniture making parts for boats whatever you want to work with right there's a lot of um, useful things that you can do just with this simple intro that you've that you've got here and we are going to be casting these and i will be taking you along for that journey so go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and make sure you can follow us through so I hope you've gotten something out of it, and I hope that you have a wonderful, blessed day, and we'll see you next time here at Old Ways Rising Farm.